really, I remember the exact moment. This girl walks in and they said it was with a group of girls, but I only saw one and it was Lindsay. She had like that, that radiance about her, that light. At 19, uh, she was diagnosed with cancer out of nowhere. It was caught early enough to where they were able to get rid of it. 21, two years later, it showed back up. And this time it was more serious. It required a bigger surgery, um, hysterectomy. And at that point in our, our relationship, I had an engagement ring in my pocket. You know, I, I asked her to marry me, we got engaged. And through the year of engagement, she went through chemo. We started a life. Everything was good from there, uh, and we did adopt two children. Cancer showed back up, uh, really out of nowhere again. So my prayers were very bold. It was, God, heal her, fix this. But it turned into quickly a uh, fight for her life, and it meant looking in the eyes and saying, you've got this, stay here with me. And fighting for her life, CPR, crying out to God, Please heal her. Please bring her back. I found myself saying goodbye to my wife, not by choice. I felt like my wife was leaving, and yet it wasn't that she went to heaven. It's that heaven literally came down to get her. Lindsay went home to heaven August 28th, 2015. I walked out of that hospital having no clue what my life would look like. So I had a deal with reality that my wife was no longer there. Someone I had known since I was 15. And now I'm in my 30s dealing with reality that I never thought I would. And so the kids forced me to deal with what was going on. There was no dancing around the topic. They asked where mommy was. They wanted to know when she's coming back. I'm sleeping on the couch because I don't want to be in a bed. It's another reminder that Lindsay's not here. One of the hardest things that month was picking up my phone to text her out of habit calling her phone out of habit and stopping mid-dial or mid-ring and knowing that I never will hear her voice again. And God spoke to me so clearly. He said, that connection that you desire with Lindsay and that you want, you can have it, but it's through me. And what she's doing right now is worshiping me. And why don't you try that? So I, I look at that as a pivotal point in my grief of saying, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to worship you and lift up your name high above all the pain, above all the hurt I'm going through. And I say, God, I'm ready. Whatever you have for me, I don't know the why. I don't get it. Don't like it. But I refuse to waste this pain that I've gone through. I refuse to allow this to be wasted or pushed to the side. And that's where I start moving forward. God comforted me so much in what I was going through. I was encouraged to comfort others. I could actually speak to a pain that I'd never known before. That as Christians, we're headed home. We're headed to heaven. And our focus should not be outward. It should be upward. And as we look up to what is coming and getting a glimpse of that, even in my wife's death, I realized the best is yet to come for all of us if we trust and believe in God. My life was so amazing when Patrick and I met. He was my first boyfriend. I was his first girlfriend. So we got married in 2011 and we stood on the stage together and we said, I promise to be faithful through life's pleasures and through life's pressures. I will be faithful to you until Christ calls me home. In the fall of um, 2015, we had three kids under the age of three and life was crazy and busy, but it was so fun because I felt like I was living a dream. He came home and he always did daddy time with the boys. And so he tucked them into bed that night and would always sing them a song and pray over them. I remember us praying together and going to sleep. He woke up the next morning and he was like, you know, I'm not sleeping much anyways. I'm just gonna go ahead and get ready early to go to work. I said, you look so handsome in your suit and I hope you have a great day. I love you. And that's what I said. And he said, I love you too. And he walked out the door. I went to Bible study and we were studying revelation and prophecy at the time. And just moments later, my phone rang. So I answered the unknown number and it was my husband's boss on the other line. And he said, hey, um, Patrick fell at work. We're gonna send a vehicle to come get you so you can come to the hospital. I ran into a hallway um, full of people with sorrow written all over their faces. And they pulled me behind a curtain. And they sat me down in a chair and they said, I'm so sorry, Brittany, but Patrick died. His heart just stopped beating. Patrick went home to be with the Lord on September 29th, 2015. And in that moment, at the age of 25, with three little boys under the age of three, I became a widow. 
and my entire world turned upside down. We felt sorrow that felt unending. And it felt like my heart was literally breaking in two, but also felt Jesus just sitting with me and saying, I feel your pain, it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna walk you through this. And I would come in my living room and I just remember falling flat on my face and just crying out to God and saying, God, I can't do this. I cannot do this apart from you. And he was so faithful to use his word to soothe my soul in a way only he could do. In those darkest moments of our lives, sometimes can be the lightest moments of our lives because God is so near to the brokenhearted. And I remember how God would just, as he says in scripture, how he gives widow the songs in the night. And God would give me a new song to sing. And, he, and it doesn't matter if you're in a place of utter brokenness and hurt like I was fresh after my husband's death, or here I am several years later out of it. God is still the same sovereign God over all situations. When I met Brittany for the first time, one of the first questions I had to answer in my heart was, am I ready to pursue somebody again? And I'm not just making a decision for me, it's for my family. And when I saw Brittany, I saw a future. And that was incredible. And it was very just exciting. The Lord was so gracious because I think in, in every area of your life, after loss and pain, you are so guarded with your heart because you feel like your heart has been trampled on. And so the Lord made it so clear. And then Daniel was so intentional with his pursuit of leading us in the ways of God, yet guarding our hearts in the process until God's timing made evidently clear that we were going to be a family. Uh, I brought Ethan and Aubrey uh, with me and they loved being around each other so much that by the time they left that weekend, they were crying about leaving each other. And so that was really encouraging for us moving forward. I remember one night, Peyton um, had been praying and they had been praying for a new daddy. And I was thinking, what in the world are y'all thinking about? I said, well, buddy, it's not just about us. Like God's got to bring the right person. He said, well, I think I know someone. I said, you do? And he said, what about Mr. Daniel? I think he would be a great daddy. And I said, well, that means that, you know, Ethan and Aubrey, and he said, would be my brother and sister. And I would really like that mommy. So we got married on July 16th, 2017. And just continued on with the crazy and the wild and, and the love and the beautiful part of bringing kids together. After we announced our engagement, um, people started calling us the Brooker Bunch because we are a blended family and the last name is Brooker. Our life is like a circus. <laughs> um, I feel like we're traveling circus. It's so crazy because we have five small children, abnormally close in age. Yeah, enjoying the first, creating these moments that that you know maybe I had as a child or that they wanted to do. So for our family, there is always a road of joy and sorrow that intermingle. You know, this is part of our story. And you know, Patrick will always be part of my story and Lindsay will always be a part of his story. I think as you go through pain, it's okay to admit it. It's okay to be real because until you address it, it's not gonna heal. God is not wasting your pain. He's not wasting anything you're walking through. He sees you and he cares. And he wants you to, we want you to live our life that is full of joy, full of love and passion and pursuit. And we have to make a decision that no matter what we walk through, we have to trust and believe that that is still waiting for us, that that is still ahead. When you feel like your life is over and there is no hope ahead and you feel like you're drowning in pain, just reach up to the hand that is trying to pull you out, which is Jesus. So if there's one thing I can encourage you with is keep hoping even when it hurts. Wow, keep hoping even when it hurts. Hear those words from Brittany today. It's truth. There is always hope with Jesus. And Jesus said himself that in this world, we're gonna have trouble. We're gonna have pain, we're gonna have sorrow, we're gonna experience grief, we're going to mourn people, things, seasons in our lives. But this is also what Jesus said, take heart.
be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Just like you saw with, saw with Daniel and Brittany, they were able to have hope because they knew Jesus. They chose to say, God, I believe you, even, even though I don't understand, and even though it hurts, I choose to believe that you have a purpose for my pain, that you have a hope and a future ahead of me, even though I can't see it, even though I can't feel it right now. And friend, if you are in a season of grief and mourning, look to Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. Even when we don't have faith, we look to Jesus who has all the faith in the world for us because he is interceding on your behalf to our heavenly father who sees you and who loves you. I hope and pray that that story has given you a glimpse of hope in knowing and believing that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Before Andrew and I pray for you and your needs, whoever's watching, um, we have some more amazing miracle stories, uh, some specific answer to prayers. And on, on May 2nd, Andrew and I were actually praying just like we're about to do for viewers on the show. And Andrew had a word of knowledge about a college age girl who had been abandoned by friends and family due to her faith. A YouTube viewer named Valerie commented under that video and said, that college aged girl who's been abandoned by friends and family, that's me. I lost all my friends and I'm under persecution from my family. They need deliverance and they take out uh, the emotional abuse on me. I've been struggling immensely. I thank God for that message. I know it was from him. Oh, That's God amazing. Bless. I remember that prayer time yeah. very well. I'm yeah. so glad to hear that, that response. Another testimony of God's faithfulness came in from Facebook. I've been healed from a life of addiction and an eating disorder where I once weighed 82 pounds. Today I'm at 114. That all did not take place instantly. It was a process, but faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I praise God for intervening for me and for my salvation. Amen. We have a couple of moments left, and Ashley and I would love to pray for you. So whatever your need is, let's bring it before the throne room of God. Jesus. Father, thank you for these praise reports. Thank you for your love. Thank you your Holy Spirit is here with us now. I just feel like there is a uh, young woman praying for the marriage of her parents, which seems to be crumbling and hopeless. And you're praying earnestly for restoration and healing in your parents' marriage. And the Lord hears your cry. Yes. And you are going to see fruit from your faithful love and prayers. Yeah, I believe there's a woman watching. Um, you have experienced a miscarriage and you are grieving deeply for that. This is this. I believe this hasn't been your first miscarriage. And you're just wondering and you're questioning God's purpose for all of this. And I just believe the Holy Spirit is just touching you right now. I just believe that Jesus is with you. He is with you. He sees you. I just pray right now for just a tangible outpouring of your love over this wonderful, amazing, beautiful mother and woman of God. And I just, I just pray for healing of your heart and healing of your womb. In Jesus' name, you shall be fruitful and you shall bear children, multiple children, and we just believe this and declare it in the mighty name of Yeshua, our Savior. Amen. <clears throat> this is, it's kind of exciting to me. There's someone who is trying to read and understand the Word of God and having great difficulty just understanding it and comprehending it. The desire is there. And the Holy Spirit's just going to flood you, with, like illuminating His Word. And you're going to be so... Um, it's going to become so real to you. You're going to have trouble keeping up with all God is revealing. So have hope in what he's going to do in your path. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, everyone. I'm Ashley Key. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so we can reach more people with encouraging content like you just watched and so you never miss a beat. See you next time, and God bless.